So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have with us uh, Mr. Rajesh uh, from LNT, and uh, he is actually the man with the boots on ground. Uh, the, one of the largest EPC player in renewables, uh, not only in India but also in uh, Middle East, and uh, the and he also has presence in the Africa region. So we will be learning a lot of things, uh, which man with uh, both of his feet on floor. Uh, how is he experiencing uh, the trans energy transmission in uh, in a country where uh, rely most of the reliance was on the uh, the drill, baby drill, oil and gas uh, uh, business, how they are transforming uh, their energy requirements. Uh, Rajiji, help us in understanding that, you know, what is the ecosystem here uh, for the uh, renewable energy and how energy, uh, the usage of energy is transforming towards the renewables and uh, clean energy sources. What is your experience here? Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity given. Uh, first and foremost, uh, as, you, as, you, as you are aware, the world is becoming green day by day, and UAE is not far behind. So we, the uh, renewable energy in UAE is powered by two utilities, primarily one is the Deva, second is the EWEC, Emirates Water and Electricity Company based in Abu Dhabi. So they both are driving this, convert, this uh, renewable in a big way. Uh, in fact, in Dubai, uh, Deva has got the flagship program called MBR Solar Park, outskirts of Dubai where they have got five phases in operation of around 3.3 .3 gigawatt. And the fourth phase is under, uh, sixth phase is under, under execution. So they expect to touch around 7.2 gigawatt by 2030. And similarly, the EWAC, which is a flagship company in, in Abu Dhabi, drives the various projects in Abu Dhabi and other areas. So they expect to add another uh, 20, 10 to 20 gigawatt in the coming years. So the, the, with this, you know, UAE, UAE expects to grow to around 40 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2030. It is quite ambitious and I believe it is also doable with so much of opportunities coming up uh, as the land is available, ecosystem has been built, the government is quite proactive, the, the approvals are all, you know, comes at a, at a good, good uh, at a decent pace, so it doesn't pull back the projects. And apart from it, resources are also available uh, uh, with India and other, other neighboring countries. So we find the ecosystem quite conducive to work here. And we are hopeful that, yes, we should be uh, able to achieve the target, I mean, what the UAE government uh, intends to do. You know, uh, uh, Middle East, uh, especially UAE, is known for, you know, business-like approach. Uh, we understand that a uh, lot of things are easier, made easier, tailor-made for helping the businesses execute. And uh, we are coming from India, uh, you know, where uh, things are gradually improving. You know, you have worked in both the geographies. Uh, what is your experience? Uh, you know, what sort of uh, things India can learn from UA's ecosystem? Uh, if you can list, especially, you know, if you can give us in a dotted form, that will be easier for us to digest. See, uh, if you see from India versus the, the UAE perspective, the differences are primarily one is approvals. Approvals has to improve quite a lot in India. It has to be quite, you know, once upon a time, I think some single window concept was introduced which never really took off. I'm talking about India. The second is the land. Land is a big issue in our country, in India, whereas here it is not so. Here it is all our maximum, our government owned lands. They take the land is secured before the bids are floated for the power plants and accordingly the process moves. And third is the right of way. Right of way in uh, India is a big issue in terms of a power transmission. You put up a plant, you want to evacuate power, the, the, the project gets stuck in limbo for years together, months together with no visibility. Whereas here it is all having its own uh, mechanism to ensure that it is pushed at a very fast pace. I think these three are the major differences which I think our country can learn and, and make it happen. And uh, Rajiji, how uh, bankable are the projects? Uh, how How is your relationship with the financial institution? Uh, when I say you, that means the industry as such, I'm asking. Uh, do you think that, uh, because you know, uh, government is uh, one of the largest buyer of uh, electricity coming out for renewables. So what is the experience there? From the bankable perspective, the projects which have taken off or have been commissioned from the renewables perspective, all have been, all have been are doing good. 
uh, and see all the again these are all uh, the lenders are mostly the local banks or international reputed international banks to the lenders um, and the lenders in turn give it to the developers developers in turn get it executed by the epc contractors so from the perspective of the uh, bankability the projects are very are quite viable it gives you a good a decent return and most important thing these are all through competitive bidding most of the projects here are all through competitive bidding and the competitive bidding en enables the uh, i mean opening up of what is the irr you expect from when you bid a particular project through a development mode so in that way the process is quite good quite robust and most of the developers who are putting the projects in uae are quite i should say uh, I, I, I although i, I cannot talk about their the way they have been thinking but it has taken off well and it has been uh, it also it has been commissioned accordingly that is what is the point uh, you know globally if you see i'm talking about now equipment uh, side uh, globally we're seeing that supply chain uh, diversification has been talked about india is also ramping up their clean tech manufacturing uh, we understand that uh, west asia is dominated by the chinese products um, you know rightly so because of the scale which they have uh what sort of lessons do you want to inculcate into the indian system because now they are gradually positioning themselves uh as a as an alternative uh, to the chinese supply chain uh what sort of uh, you know things do you uh, do you expect india to have so that they can become more competitive on the global markets see indian products if you ask me are really good if you, are quite good in, in the respect of the performance in the indian scenario but when you come down to the middle east there is a change in the entire geography as such the temperatures are high 50 55 degrees and all that compared to what we do in india so one is the indian manufacturers have to start coming into this part of the world start campaigning start canvassing make the product suitable for their present environment and then try to sell it across and they are definitely takers for it but this, has, this there has to be perseverance for it it will take time because still the chinese uh, the all the uh, equipments for a renewable for a uh, for a renewable plant 98% is all chinese everything comes from china right from module up to the cable cables are okay they are you know partly from saudi arabia partly from you know, from uh, i mean uae all the critical components are sourced from china so if indian indian industries ca can come here they should come here if you ask me and then see what best they can do to convince the developers in turn the utility guys the eva can the deva put up their shop put up their road show and say that yes they can do it but i'll tell you why it is not happening it is because india itself is booming now renewable energy is in full swing so they don't look beyond india they prefer think india is there for me to for me to grow so i should go out but in reality they have to come out of the shell this is this business is going to be there for next 10 years consistently including the other parts of middle east you know there is a uh, conversation going on that uh, india wants to link um, their uh, solar projects in gujarat with uh, uh, uae and why i am asking you this question is because of your experience in africa uh, we know that uh, similar project is also there in morocco to uh southampton uh, where you know a connecting uh, via subsea uh, hvdc line has been uh, uh, pushed through and lnt i'm uh, i understand that you are one of the keen uh, uh, bidders for that project you know uh, these uh, challenges are similar you know that might be a 4000 uh, kilometer uh, uh, cable and uh, this is 3000 uh, kilometer cable and world has never seen uh, this long cable and uh, seabed is also similar so you know help us in understanding that how feasible are such projects uh, you know the world's uh, grid connectivity is dependent on these two projects uh, if i can understand it correctly that uh, the the dr big dream uh, of uh, international solar alliance of uh, having one sun one, one world grid. and one grid uh, relies on these two projects what is your insight uh, how feasible are these projects what sort of handicaps we can witness and thirdly the, the obviously you know the challenge how prudent the technology is to you know weather that uh, challenge 
Coming to the challenges part, see any uh, uh, subsea submarine cable needs to be robust. It has to be designed exclusively for it. It has to undergo its own technical uh, parameters uh, wetting. Number one. Number two, the design should uh, should uh, should say uh, should subsist or should support that that particular concept to be viable. Number one. Number two. Second comes the financial viability of it. In the case of the Morocco links, I think still uh, most of the, there are people still uh, no, uh, it's still in advanced stage of uh, the financiers coming on the ground, and uh, that is already approved by the government of UK to some ex to a greater extent, and they agreed to you no know, exchange. I mean, have the power into UK. Here, that sort of a thing has to come in. That is that to ensure that the power flows from uh, from UAE to Gujarat and vice versa, depending upon the. One and the time lag which is required. The challenge is one, as I told you, the the the, spe, the cable technically. Two, how do we navigate the treacherous ocean beds, which is quite a challenge by itself. And that to this sort of part of the world, I don't think uh, you know it's not so easy to map and come out with the clear cut strategy that cable can take this route, etc. Because all are going to be on the seabed, not floating. So uh, these two are the big challenges from the point of view of making it viable. Oh, but do you think uh, the technology is is there uh, to wither this challenge? Because you know, especially you know, the apprehension is there because we have never seen this uh, before. And uh, and secondly, you know, this financial aspect uh, because we don't know whether because because of the price differential between the electricities. Uh, we don't know whether it is financially viable to have you know this much of risk. So, what is your assessment? Uh, is this risk worth enough, or a world has to wait uh, till the time you know offshore wind comes on float, and that can uh, basically you know uh, subsidize these costs? See, if you ask me, probably India can wait because you've got offshore wind coming up now as a pilot project of the coast of Gujarat. So, whereas in the other parts of the world, it is not so because they don't have much of that particular concept, uh, you know, uh, uh, financially viable. So, but this in, the, in our case, I think they can wait till the offshore picks up, and probably depending upon the situation, uh, this particular uh, pr this particular concept can be applied or can be looked into. Okay, um, you know, the, the time clock is uh, clicking uh, very fast. Maybe, you know, we can have a last uh, question from you where we can, you know, if you can list four to five, you know, the takeaways uh, that your experience dealing in Africa as well as in India, as uh, in uh, Dubai as well, what sort of innovations India need to do, especially on the engineering side? Second is on the R&D, especially to position complex projects because we have already seen that you have executed them. So help us in understanding that, sir. See, from the point of view of the uh, of India coming up to this particular thing, yes, it is possible. Uh, you, we need, uh, most of our industries down in our country don't spend on our research development. Whereas, if you see in this part of the world, most of the equipments comes in from Europe. All the utilities, uh, and, from some, and from China, as I told you. So the research and development forms a very key component. That if our industries, you know, uh, get the, I should say, met, have the metal to pump in and start investing heavily onto it, then it will be a big game changer for our uh, industries in India to become global. It is definitely possible. That is what is my assessment of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. your insightful. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.